holidays are fast approaching and that means lots of holiday gatherings with friends and families. But we all might need a little bit of help impressing our guests if we're hosting this year. Here to help us learn the do's and the don'ts of setting your dinner table is national etiquette expert and the founder of the Charleston School of Pro Protocol, Cindy Grasso. Hi. Welcome back. Yes, thank you. Thank this is you. exciting. You just set an entire table in our studio. Uh, beautifully, by the way. <laughs> this is kind of your thing. Mm -hmm. You are the hostess with the mostest all the time. <laughs> I love this. I love this. So you're always hosting all the holidays and your guests are very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love this. Um, this is sort of something I have called Set the Table Sunday and I just think that table setting is so important yeah. for family, for conversation, for relationships. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an art. Mm, yes, I think it is almost yeah. a lost art. I yeah. You get to be creative with it, and you obviously get to bring the holiday spirit into things. So this is kind of set for Thanksgiving, right? Yes. So yes. this is a good Thanksgiving um, table setting. Yes, sure. This is set for about four courses. So depending on what you're having, you can, you know, whatever your menu might be, but t totally would work for Thanksgiving. Okay, great. Well, start bringing us through. You <laughs> did a lot. There's a lot over here. Uh, I don't know if everybody remembers to put out all of this, but hopefully they'll know now. Or bring us through um, this typical table setting that you put out for us. Sure, absolutely. So first we have a charger underneath the dinner plate. And the charger really was just a placeholder. That's all it was. You never actually eat food off of a charger, directly off of it. Okay. It was basically, some people call it a service plate or a base plate, mm -hmm. but it basically was just to let people know that we were expecting you. It was very important for people to be seen as civilized. Nobody, no nation wanted to be seen as barbaric. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was people would come to people's home, table would be set, food wouldn't be on it, but the table would be set. And so what this meant was was when they came in, there was about an hour time frame, and before dinner was actually served, that was considered proper, and that hour became known as cocktail hour. And so again, the plates were on the table, or the chargers, really not okay. even full setting, and it was just a placeholder to let people know that we knew you were coming, and of course we expected you. So that's wow. the charger. Okay, cool, the charger. Yep, the charger. Did not it, know it had a name. Yeah, the charger. <laughs> it can stay on the table really all the way until the main course is served. When the main course is served, mm -hmm. technically the dinner plate would hit the table. Okay. So, so, but then we, of course we have our dinner plate, and then we have our setting. You can always tell what you're going to have for the meal by the way the silverware is arranged. And people say, people, they always say, I say, do you know how silver is arranged? They say, yeah, outside in. Really close, it's outside in kind, K-I-N-D. And it's a very important word because you'll see that the forks will go with the forks, that's their kind. And then the spoons and the knives will go with their kind. And okay. I'll show you in a minute why that really does matter. So it's outside in kind, depending on what you're, what okay. you're dining. Great, okay, learning so much terminology <laughs> here. <laughs> so, um, but we can, we can talk a little bit about that. So we have the dinner fork and the dinner knife. And um, that's going to be closest to the plate in this particular situation. We see a spoon to the outside of the knife. So we know that we're going to be having some kind of soup. And so the soup would be first. And then we might be having some kind of salad. That's what this salad fork is outside of the fork. So it'd be soup, salad. And sometimes in, in a certain service, certain services make different utensils. So you go into a store, you like a pattern, mm -hmm. you can't, you have to buy what they have. You mm -hmm. can't say, well, I would like a salad knife. If they don't make one, yeah. they don't make one. So you could have a salad knife in addition to this, and it would be, be between the spoon and the dinner knife. Okay. But if not, you would just have your salad fork and then your main course. Above it would be your dessert utensils, your spoon and your fork for your dessert. And if I were to bring this down, the dessert utensil is totally fine there, but mm -hmm. it could also be in the lineup down here. Okay. So if it's in the lineup down here, since we have dessert last, the fork would be closest to the plate. Totally get that. But here's where the word kind matters. If we just said outside in, you put this dessert fork next to the plate because uh -huh. what? That's the last thing you eat. Uh -huh. But it's not. That's where the word kind. So the spoons go with the spoons. And as spoons go, soup is first and then dessert. Oh, okay. So that's why the word kind matters. And by the way, fork has four letters and so does the word left. 
so forks are always on the left. Well, that is a great tip because <laughs> I'm always confused about that, honestly. All right, that's great. And then knives, spoons, glass or drink have five letters. Okay. And so does the word right. So they're always on the right. Did you come up with that? <laughs> no, but it's great. <laughs> that and is then, amazing. Yeah. And then the, the anchor glass is your um, iced tea glass. Technically, this is iced tea. Oh. Water is straight, has no stem. Today they call them ice beverage because they'll use it for water and for tea. Okay. But this glass is always over the knife closest to the plate. Okay. That's your anchor glass. Okay. And then all other glasses will be to the right of that. Okay, very cool. And so most people really are not interested in how to have a six course meal. Mm -hmm. Most people just want to get through a holiday or get through an interview mm -hmm. or get through a business yeah. lunch or dinner. But I always tell them once you learn this, which could be three courses, mm -hmm. four courses, then you, you could do any yeah. of it. So it's all, it's all right there, even just learning the few. This is the basics, yeah. yeah. Napkin, by the way, can go in the center of the place setting. That's considered one of the most proper places, or to the left of the forks, not underneath it, okay. with the fold to the outside, okay. to the left of the forks. Okay. And so, and then candles, if you have candles, candles are actually, um, candle etiquette says that you really should burn your candles before you actually place them out. And there was a reason for that was, a little trivia, there was a time when some people had electricity and some people didn't. And so they would burn their candles not to make other people feel left out, like they had electricity, but the other people didn't. Interesting. So that's why people say you always should burn your candles. So that's why, and if you light candles, it, it, in the evening it's fine, but if you do it during the day, you're supposed to draw your curtains, mm -hmm. and that's how candle etiquette, a little candle etiquette is. We need some candle <laughs> etiquette in our lives. I love candles, and I feel like especially for the holidays, like I want to light all of the candles in my house and just, it just makes have it that more warm festive. feeling. Yes. Yeah. Warm and, and what do you have over here? These are just different things. Uh, for example, this is technically a soup bowl versus a soup plate. People sometimes don't realize there's a, a cup a bowl or a plate. Okay. You know what a cup of soup yeah. looks like, a yeah. small. A bowl comes up and it has no rim around it. So this is a bowl. Mm -hmm. A plate would have a rim. A soup plate would have a rim. So different things that you could eat soup out of. And just, um, technically this is really a teacup, but this is what comes with the service. Teacup flares out a little bit, or mm -hmm. a coffee cup is a little bit straighter. And so if you were to have tea, by the way, maybe we could do yeah. a tea thing because January is National Tea Ooh, Month. Perfect. But I could show you how to hold it, and teas are great, yeah. lovely. And then this is demitasse for espresso. It's a demitasse cup and a demitasse so saucer and a demitasse spoon. I love it. Well, so. number one, you brought such an amazing spread yeah. for us yeah. here. Um, this is such great tips. And it's just exciting. We're finally in the holiday season. I, I love it because I tell people set the table Sunday and and it does not have to be Sunday, it does not have to be a meal you cook, yeah. but you're setting the stage, even if it's just your family. You're setting the stage and when you put it, if you have good china, use it. If you don't yeah. make it a fun table, that's Might fine well. too. But what does it do? It kind of what tells your family, yeah. your children, that they're important, yeah. and these things are important, and it sets a, a stage for a great conversation. Yeah, it certainly so, does. So absolutely, thank you so much. This is amazing stuff, and hopefully everybody has an amazing, safe holiday. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely.